Welcome to the Brandstand Woodwind Shop. This is the fourth video in the Cornet Restoration Series. In this video I'm going to remove the dents. These are all the parts with dents. All the other parts do not have any dents in them, so I'm not going to do those. Here's what we have. Uh, there are several dents along the bell rim. Some of these have been removed before and then either they weren't done well or dents got back in there after the fact. So I'm going to have to clean those up a bit. On the bell section there are a couple small dents. There's a larger one right here and also the one in the bell bow. All of the ones in the bell bow are easier to do. A lot of people think those are hard dents because they're around a curve but actually they're not that hard. This one will be a little bit harder here because it's around a curve, but the curve is not tapered. This is cylindrical tubing, so uh, the dent balls will have a harder time going in to get that out all the way. It will be easy to get it out a little bit of the way, but to get it out all of the way is going to be harder. And those are about all the dents on the body of the cornet. It's actually in very good shape for its age. The main tuning slide has a few smaller dents. These dents will be easy to get out because I can just go in through the tuning slide and get the dent out like that. Now this one, the C crook, it's tapered so I can get a dent ball in there and get the dents out that way. But then I have the it's either an A crook or a low pitch crook. I'm not sure which one. That is very damaged. If I hold that like that, you can see how the tubing is bent in. Some people wonder what order you should do dents in. Usually it does not matter that much, but sometimes, like let's say you have a really large dent right here, and then you have some smaller dents here. Obviously you're going to need to get this dent out first before you get to those, but usually it does not matter. Um, I'm going to start on this one with the bell rim and just work my way down through the instrument. Before I get started, I'm going to take a look to see what I am working with. Uh, I have a lot of ripples here. Uh, ripples is where the metal goes up, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down again. Well, at least on this dent right here, on this cross section it does. So um, those are a little harder to do. Um, they still can be done, obviously, but they're a little, they take a little more time. It appears that over the years some dents have been put into the bell and then taken out probably at least twice. We also have right here, uh, there's a place where there's a crease that goes around. And usually when a crease goes around, that means that a bell has been pushed in and it has affected the metal uh, up a distance at least up into the the bell throat. In this case about up to here. Dents that curl around the bell and the bell rim dents, they need to be taken care of at the same time. You cannot really take care of the bell rim dents and then the other dents later. So those have to get worked on together. I'm going to start with my trusty roller and that's the tool I use for probably 90% of my bell rim dent work from about here to here. What I'm going to do is work my way around the bell rim and I'm going to push out dents as I go, but I'm not going to push them all out all of the way because if you push them out all the way at one time then you can get a spot where they all make a big mess. So what I'm going to do is just get them out a little bit of the way, go around, and then get them out a little bit more of the way. I am also going to switch from getting the dents out from the inside of the bell and from the outside of the bell. Here I go. Okay, these dents are coming out fairly easily. And this metal is fairly thin. Sometimes the older instruments have very thick, hard metal, but this is thin, which is worse for getting dents in, but easier for taking dents out. And there's a sharp one right at the end. And I am adjusting the amount of pressure I am using. You don't just go through with the same amount of pressure. You need to calculate in your mind how much pressure you need for each dent depending upon the shape of the dent and a few other factors and also how hard the metal is and how thick it is but I've already determined that and the hardness and thickness of the metal is probably not going to change much on the bell rim it might change on other parts of the bell but on the bell rim it's probably going to be about the same as I go through I'm just going to make all those calculations and then uh, just push down the right amount and also you get feedback as you go. If you see things not going well then you change something. If they are going well then you just keep doing what you're doing. 
I always wonder if people get sick of seeing me do dance because I do so many dance on the videos and on the restoration projects. But it seems like people love watching dents get removed. And I think that's because you can see a change. A lot of things you do, like if valves work better, you cannot see the change. I mean, you can feel it, and if you're playing the instrument, you definitely know it. But you can't really see it change. But when you're doing dents, you can take an instrument that looks bad and make it look good. I think that's why people like dents. And also, every dent is different. I actually did a video on that one time. Uh, I think I actually called it, Every Dent is Different. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Okay, well I made it around the bell one time. And I got the dents out a little bit of the way. Now I'm going to address the what I mentioned before, the curved dent in the bell. That needs to be pushed out a little bit of the way. I need to be very careful because this is flat and this is rounded. So if I push too hard or if I just push in one spot, it's going to push in and make a flat spot. So I'm going to kind of move back and forth as I do this. I'm going to like make, make a pass through the middle of the dent and then off to one side, off to the other side, back and forth like that to try to keep the bell rounded, uh, smooth out the dent but keep it rounded. I can tell that the metal is a lot harder on the throat section of the bell. Okay, that is coming out a little bit. I'm going to have to address that dent some more, but I'm going to keep going through. Oh, there's another uh, curved dent that I need to take care of. I'm going to go around one more time from the outside and then after that I am going to address the bell rim that is not flat. I'll show you that in a little while. But I'm just going to go around one more time taking out some of the more easy to get at dents. Earlier I showed you the dents that start inside the bell throat and then curl around. If you have those type of dents, it is probably also accompanied by dents in the bell rim that go down. And I'll show you what that looks like. If I take the bell and turn it, you can see that this bell is not round. There are some parts that go out and then others that go in. What happened is the cornet probably was dropped on one side of the bell and that pushed that side in. And while it pushed the side of the bell rim in, it also left a curved mark in the instrument. A lot of times, but not always, this dent on the one side will also cause a dent on the other side. What happens is when you have metal that is shaped like a hyperbola, like a bell is, the uh, the forces when it's pushed in cause the forces on the other side to push out right here and then on this side it pushes it in. This side can get bent in when this side is the one that is hit. Now what I'm going to do is find the low spot in the bell and on this cornet it's obvious it's right here but there are other ways of telling that. You can take a flat spot like my bench with the carpet removed, set it on the bench and move it around and see which direction it goes. And in this case, it goes right there. So I know that this is the low spot. And there's also an accompanying low spot on the other side of the bell too. There are different ways of fixing this, but since the metal is soft, I'm just going to use my hands. So what I'm going to do is put my hands on the bell like this. These fingers are on the spots that are pointed in that direction, and then my thumbs are on the spots that are pointed in the other direction. You want to be careful when you do this. I'm going to use a flexing motion. I'm not using all my strength. I am just using little flexing motions where you push forward and then let up on it and that way it gives you a lot more control over what you do. Okay, it did not bend much so I'm going to push a little harder. I have to be very careful because often when you do this you end up with this side pointed out and these sides pointed in. You don't want that. You want it even and not the opposite of the way that it is. So I'm going to be very careful not to go too far. And a lot of this is just done with experience. You know what brass feels like. Okay, and what I'm doing now, you might wonder why I'm grabbing the bell throat. I am feeling to see if it is oval. 
when you have solved the problem of the spiraled creases in the bell, then the bell throat will be round. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the dents around the bell rim. You do not want to do all of the dents at one time because if I were to get the spiral dents out all at once then the bell rim would be crooked still and I would have more problems getting those dents out. So you take the dents out a little bit of the way then you go to some other kinds of dents then you go to the other kind and you just work your way through a little at a time. So there are actually like four different types of dents in this bell rim. You have the spiraled dents going up the side of the bell. You have the dents where the bell is creased in. Then you have the rippled dents. You also have the dents where the bell does not sit on a flat surface. Now I'm going to work on these rippled dents and those are hard to get out with the roller. And the reason why is they are too close to the bead on the bell rim. But there is another way to get those dents out. There are three tools that I usually use for these type of dents. There's the small dent hammer. This has a more flat end and a more rounded end. And same with this one. This is a medium dent hammer. And this is a burnisher. Make sure that these tools are clean and free of any grit or rust or anything like that. Also you can use a little bit of wax to help the tools not scratch the surface. Then what I do is I sit on my bench, put my feet on the stool, and it looks a little weird, but you do what you need to do to get the dents out, and who cares if it looks a little odd. That puts the instrument at just the right level so that I can work on it easily and see what I'm doing. I use the medium sized dent hammer if the dents are a little farther from the bead on the bell rim and then I use the smaller dent hammer if the dents are closer and this burnisher it has a really sharp point on it and I use that if I need to get right up to the bead on the bell rim. On this instrument most of the dents are a little farther away from the bead on the bell rim so I'm probably going to use this tool for most of these dents. I'm going to try to make sure that the camera can see those dents because it is very satisfying watching those dents come out. I'm trying to get the light in the camera just right so that you can see it. I think that is good. Okay, did you see that come out? Yeah, that's very satisfying. It's not all the way out yet. Again, I'm going to do this in stages, but that is a start at least. Now I'm moving on to the other dance. This metal has several ripples in it, and when I say a ripple in the metal, what I mean is where the metal goes up and then down, then up and then down. The more times it is rippled, the harder it is to do. The more times you need to go back and forth between the dent hammers and the roller. And this metal has been rippled several times, so I'm going to be going back and forth between the dent hammer and the roller several times. But I'm just going to go around the bell one more time with this dent hammer. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to switch to the smaller dent hammer. Usually I use the end that's more rounded. That works well for the sharper dents. For the dents that aren't as sharp, I can use the flatter end, but usually it's the round end. So I'm going to work on pushing those dents out. And these ones, uh, with this hammer, I'm going to get closer to the, the bead on the bell rim. And also, this one works well on the sharper dents that are a little farther in. If the dents are like right here, you would not push them out with a dent hammer. You'd use the roller on that. But the ones that are right up, I'm going to say about this close, maybe oh, three quarters of an inch or about two centimeters in, I can use the dent hammers. If it's any farther in, I will use the roller because the roller has a little less chance of scratching the bell. This dent is really close to the edge, so I'm going to use the burnisher on this one. And this one can get right up to where that dent is. I'm holding the burnisher like this. I'm going to use my thumb to control it. And I'm also using my other fingers to push on it. Like that. Okay. That dent came out some of the way. You have to be careful on this because it can push out the metal a little too far in a sharp line. 
So you have to be careful. And again on this one there is a flatter side. It's rounded but it's a little bit flatter. And then the other side is more rounded. I've started to get the ripple dents out but I'm going to stop here and go back to the roller. I'm going around the bell rim one or maybe two or three more times with the roller. And then I'm going to go back to some of the other dents. I went around the bell rim two or three more times and this is what we have now. And I'm going to go from the outside now and push those dents out a little bit farther. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth between the techniques you've seen so far. And I might try a few other techniques. And I was just thinking as I was doing this, there are many things that well I cannot really show. So after you've watched this video, you will not know everything there is to know about dent removal. I cannot show you every type of dent removal because every dent is different and this cornet may not have certain types of dents in it. But it does give you a, it, it gives you a feel for some types of dents. If you want to work with brass and do dent removal, the best way to do it is just to get a few junk instruments and practice on them. If it's a junk instrument, it really does not matter if you mess it up. After that, get a few other instruments and work on fixing them up and practice. And just keep practicing because the only way to get better at dance is to just keep doing it. And experiment, see what ways work and what does not. And also talk to other people who are experienced and see how they do it. Not everybody does dents the exact way I do it, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter how you do it as much as if the job gets done well and if it does not do any damage to the instrument. If somebody disagrees with me on the way I'm doing dents, I'm okay with that because there are different ways of doing things and there are different ways that work well. That is as far as I'm going to go with the roller right now. I think what I'm going to do now is uh, flatten out the bell a little bit more. I'm back to the bench for a flat surface. Okay, right there is where it's the worst. So I'm going to bend that again. Every time you get the dents out a little bit more from one direction, it helps you get the dents out from the other direction too. And that's why I'm going back and forth between the different techniques. Because if I try the, just one technique and keep going with it, then it's really going to throw everything else off. I'm going to keep doing this until it's closer than it was. Okay. I think the dent shifted a little bit, which is okay. No. Remember I told you that a lot of times it happens on the other side of where the dent was too. So I'm going to the other side now. I'm going to push on that. Sometimes these bells can get rippled too. On this bell rim it goes up quite a bit for a short period and then back down. There are other ways of dealing with that if you have a little bit sharper of a dent. You find the high spot and then you bridge the high spot with your hands and then take a rubber mallet and lightly, not very hard, but lightly tap that in. And see that? Uh, that helped quite a bit of the way. Now I'm going to do that again. Find the high spot and bridge it and then tap that in. Now let's see how we're doing. Okay, this is a lot better than it was. There's still a high spot and a low spot, but it's a lot better than it was. Okay, this is almost flat now. It's not perfect, but I'm going to come back to this. It's good enough for now. Now I'm going to go back to the dents and the ripples at the edge of the bell. I'm going to do it the same way. Just go around and push out those dents. Most people who do not know a lot about brass instruments are really shocked when they see the metal moving so easily because I'm not really pushing that hard on this. I'm using this hand to hold the hammer and I'm using my thumb to control it. I'm using my other hand to push and I'm not really pushing that hard and the dents are coming out. 
And most people think when they see brass, they think it's metal, it's really hard. Well, it's, it is metal and it's a little bit hard, but it's a very soft metal. And also this metal is very thin, so the dents do come out very easily. There are other types and brands of brass instruments with a lot thicker metal, and of course you'd need to push harder on those. But on this one, these dents are coming out oh, quite easily. Since these dents went all the way around the bell rim and there were several different types of dents, they are a little harder to do, but it's still doable and uh, from what we had to work with, they are going pretty quickly. Okay, I made it around the bell rim one more time with the medium sized dent hammer. Now I'm going to switch to the smaller dent hammer. Now I'm going to switch to the burnisher to get a couple spots right along the bell rim, or the bead of the bell rim. And then I'm going to go back to the roller. So here are the dents. It is a lot better than it was, but there is still quite a bit of work to do. So I'm going to go back to the roller and push some more dents out. I'm going to push the dents out some more with the roller. I'm almost done with the roller, I think at least. I may need to use a technique called ironing. I'd rather not use that if I can get away with it. So I'm going to see if I can finish up the dents with the roller and the dent hammers and try to avoid ironing. And the reason I don't like ironing, it does smooth the dents out pretty well, but it can also harden the metal too. So I would rather leave the metal like it is as much as possible. I finished removing the dents and that's what it looks like. It's not absolutely perfect, but it is a lot better than it was, so that's good. And the bell sits flat on a flat surface, so that's also good. I had hoped to get more done this video, but everything took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos, and look in the description below for links to related dent videos.